Hey friends, it's Simon Hurley and welcome to another video. Now I've been using the Misty stamping tool in my videos and card making projects for several years and I've absolutely loved it. I don't think anything is really gonna replace it. However, throughout the years I've gotten some questions on if there are other stamping tools in the market that I would recommend and really I hadn't found anything that I absolutely loved. Either the quality was lacking or they were a little bit cumbersome to use and I didn't feel like recommending them to you if I wasn't fully behind them 100%. With that being said, Altenew just released the new stamp wheel and I'm super intrigued to take a look at it and review it with you guys in today's video. The purpose of this video is really going to walk through the stamp wheel, all of my thoughts and opinions about it, and really give you an in-depth look at everything the stamp wheel can do. Now, I wanna let you know that Altenew did kindly provide me with a stamp wheel pre-release so I can share it in my videos with you guys, but there was no requirements on to even share it or to give it a positive review. So I'm going to be completely honest with all of my thoughts on this and anything that I notice, good or bad, so you guys can make the educated decision on if you think this is right for you. I'll also have a link down below to the stamp wheel for you guys to check out in case if you're interested by the end of this video. All right, let's get into it. All right, so let's unbox the stamp wheel together. It comes in this beautiful box with sort of a wreath design on it like you can use with your stamp wheel. So in here we got some nice protective foam on the outside, I like to see that. And then here we have the sticky grid. This is the base of the stamp wheel mat. It's made out of photopolymer, so that's really interesting, something I've never seen before. And it's got its own skew and packaging to it too. So I assume that if this gets a little bit dirty or dingy, they're probably gonna offer replacements in the future. And inside of here we have the actual stamp wheel and the plate that we do all of our stamping with. All right, so let's set this up together. On this clear piece of acrylic, you're gonna notice it's a little bit cloudy at first, and that's because there's a piece of plastic on it to protect the surface in shipping. You're just gonna wanna get your nail underneath there to start peeling it, and then once you got it started, it should be pretty easy to peel off from the acrylic. And there we have a really nice clear acrylic plate then, and you can see all of those etched details in it that are gonna help us line up stamps. All right, and then in this package, we have this sticky matte grid, and on the back, it's got instructions about it. So we're just going to gently peel this from the back of the plastic packaging. It is a photopolymer stamp, so it's going to act just like photopolymer material that you know and are used to when you're stamping. So be gentle with it as you remove it from the packaging, as you don't want to stretch it. So just go nice and slow as you peel it out. So it says remove it from the plastic acetate sheet and then place it down with the engraved side down and flat side up. So the side that feels like it would usually stamp is going to go down and you're going to leave this flat clear side up. And that makes sense because that's what would usually be nice and sticky to stick to an acrylic block. But here it's going to be sticky so that it sticks down to our cardstock. It's a really innovative idea, I really like it. All right, so give it some pressure all the way around and it should stick nicely to the bottom of your stamp wheel. And then of course it says, clean any ink residue immediately to avoid staining. It's gonna just act like a photopolymer stamp. So any inks that usually stain your photopolymer stamps will probably stain this as well. That's one thing I love about my Simon Hurley Create inks is they don't usually stain the photopolymer at all. So I think that's gonna be nice for this tool. And then of course, if it gets unsticky, you're going to run it underwater, just like you would a regular photopolymer stamp. They don't really lose their stickiness and if they do run it underwater and all of that dust will be removed and it'll become nice and sticky again. So I like that. It's gonna have a pretty long life cycle. And then as far as materials, this is a plastic outer edge. It's got these little raised areas in all four corners. And then the back has this sort of fun foam material on it, as well as these little protective pads that seem to be a little grippier so that it kind of stays in place as you're doing your stamping, which is nice. So your surface below is gonna be protected from scratching or anything like that. All right, I'm super excited to test this out. So let's place a piece of my Starquit cardstock right down to the center of that cardstock and actually that seems to stick really well on there that photopolymer surface is really great it's not moving whatsoever and then I'm gonna go in with my butterfly kisses stamp set and I'm gonna pick out this large rose image here okay so we'll place this right down on the surface of our cardstock then I'm gonna go in with the stamp wheel acrylic block piece I'm going to place it right down on the surface and pick up my stamp and then lift this off. And to ink this up, I'm just going to quickly rotate it like this and place it right back down on the surface of my stamp wheel. So I'm just gonna go in and ink this up and I'm not gonna do a perfect job at inking it up. And then we'll lift it up, again rotate it, and then stamp it right down onto the surface by placing it into these corner grooves. And then we'll lift that off. You can see it didn't stamp perfectly because we didn't ink it perfect. But I want to rotate it again and then do our stamping. I'm gonna ink this up and I just wanna see if it's gonna line up in the exact same spot or if the image is gonna be a little bit fuzzy. So this is really a nice test. All right, so I'll lift it off again, rotate it, 
and then I'll place it right back down and give it some good pressure all along the surface. Lift it off, and there we have our stamped image. And I think it did a really great job. You can still see all of the details in those stamp, really nice and crisp and clear, and it's got a nice solid impression on the surface. That's what I assumed too, because these grooves on the edges lock in really nice and tight, so there's very little room for movement on there as you're doing your stamping. Let's clean the stamp. Again, I've got it flipped up towards me, and I'm just going to go in with a little bit of water and clean this off. And I know some people are gonna ask, like, is this kind of a flimsy surface to do your stamping on? It actually feels pretty nice and solid, so even when I'm inking on this side, it doesn't dip in too much, and it's really easy to work on. All right, so we'll lift off this stamp, clean this off, and then let's test out layering stamps with the stamp wheel. Because Altenew is very well known for their layering stamps. Here I'm going to use the Marble Bloom layering stamp and it's got four different layers of floral on here. So I'm gonna start off in the top left corner here, place down my piece of cardstock and I'll start with the most solid image. I'm going to peel it out and place it right down on the front and center of my cardstock. Then I'll place my acrylic block right in the groove and lift it up. And you can see it did lift my cardstock. When you're using newer photopolymer stamps, the photopolymer is gonna pull against this photopolymer. So it's gonna lift a little bit, but that happens in other stamp tools as well. And then you can just place it right back down. But I do recommend maybe stamping in the corner, especially if you're using new photopolymer, that way you can butt it right back up in the corner. Some stamping tools don't have a corner like this, but it's super important. So I'm glad they included these corner areas so you can still get it in the same spot, even if it lifts a little bit. For this first layer, I'm going to ink it up with a little bit of piggyback ink, which is my really light pink from my line. And then again, we'll lift this up, rotate it. It's a pretty easy movement to do. I like that. And then I'll stamp it right down, lift it up. It didn't get a perfect impression, but that's what I love about the tool, is you're able to go back in and stamp it in the exact same spot if you want to. And this is helpful if you want to build up color layers or just get a really great impression every time. So next we're going to lift this off the surface. We're going to bring it into the right corner, and then we'll go in with the second layer. And this is the nice part about stamping tools and using these sort of layering stamps, is it's a lot easier to go in take a little bit of extra time to line it up on there. Then we'll go in with our acrylic block again, line this up and pick it right up. Then I'm going in with a little bit of Rosy Cheeks ink, which is my second lightest color. Gonna rotate it, place it into the grooves and give it a good impression. I'm gonna quickly clean off both of my other stamps before moving on. And then for the third layer, I'm going to lift it off, rotate it and place it in this bottom left corner. I'll peel off the third layer and then I'm going to, again, take a little bit of extra time to line it up. They take a little bit of time to line up those details, but once you've got it in place, you can then go in with your stamp tool, place it down, and give it some good pressure to lift it off. Then I'm able to go in using a little bit of Prom Queen to ink up that layer really nicely. Once we've got it inked, we can rotate it and stamp it into place. There we go, we've got our third layer all done. And then for this last layer, I'm going to lift it off and again, have it still rotated upside down and place it in the bottom right corner. I'll grab the fourth layer, then we'll grab this plate, line it up in the center and place it down. And yes, this is a circular plate so it can fit in all these areas, but when you're lining it up, make sure that this cross in the center is lined up like this, and that's how you'll know that you're kind of still aligning it in the same spots. And then I'm going to stamp down this last layer using a bit of bee sting, which is this nice red color, and it's going to complete our stamping. We'll rotate it, lock it in, and then stamp it down. Perfect, there is the last layer. Now you might be wondering, what's the whole point of everything that I just did, right? We just created a beautiful flower, but it still took me a little while to line these up. But here's the awesome part about this. I can grab another piece of my stark white cardstock, I'll line it up in the corner. And the great part about it is I can go in with different colors of my ink. So here I'm still going from lightest to darkest, but this time I'm using some different yellow colors. I'm going to ink this up. I'll flip it over and stamp it down. Next, I'm gonna use a little bit of Shooting Star. I'll ink up this second layer. And for this one, I'm just going to lift it off, move it over to the next side, and then we'll go in and stamp that one down. Lift it off. And here I'm going in with my third darkest color, which is Slippery When Wet. I'll ink it up. We'll take it. So I gotta rotate it this way. We'll take it and then line it up and stamp it down. 
There's our third layer. And then for the fourth layer, we'll go in using a little bit of orange, which is this beautiful guppy color. And for this one, again, we'll have it upside down and we'll place it in the bottom right corner. We'll rotate it and then stamp it down. And there we have our super easy and beautiful lined up flower. And because we've got those images lined up in our stamping tool, it's really easy to do several of these, layer them up, and then create a really great card set. Some of the stamping tools on the market are a little bit smaller, but I like that this one has that square footprint because you can line something up in every corner that you're using and stamp it out to get these beautiful impressions. So that's one thing that makes the stamp wheel really shine. Hey guys, it's Editor Simon here, and after I filmed this video, I did realize something new, so I wanted to update it and include it in this video, and honestly, I'm sure there's gonna be other realizations too after the fact, so I'll probably make a follow-up video with any questions or comments you guys had, but I thought of this while I'm editing, so I'll insert it here. Okay, so when you're doing the layering stamps, there's actually an easier way. All you need to do is place your cardstock in the corner like this. I'm gonna start off with the first layer, and don't worry, I'm not gonna do the whole flower again. I'm just gonna show you with two of the layers. So all I need to do is lift this off the surface like this, and then of course, with this first layer, it's always gonna do that since it's got the most surface area. Okay, for this first layer, I'm gonna go in using a little bit of guppy. I'm gonna ink the whole stamp up, and then I can rotate it and stamp this down. All right, so there's our first layer stamped, all right? You know what, we missed that little area. Let's give it some more pressure there. And there we go, there's our first layer stamped. Now, instead of moving the cardstock to a different corner and making sure that that lines up, we can keep it in this corner. I don't know why I didn't think of this earlier. Line up our stamp perfectly. And then all you need to do is just rotate this. And you can see that you've rotated it one fourth when this X kind of turns, all right? And then pick my stamp up. And then I also wanted to share another trick. I'm gonna use the same color. This is Guppy again. And I'm just going to ink this up, flip it over, stamp it down. And then when it comes to ink pads, these dye-based inks can layer up their translucent dye inks. So if I don't have you know, a ton of different colors of ink pads, but I still want some good color variety, what I can do with my stamping tool is just keep stamping it several times in the same place to get a darker shade of ink. So that's a really great tip if you don't have a ton of ink pads to still get some nice dimension with layering stamps. And then of course with the third and fourth layer, just rotate it again, pick up the stamp, and rotate it one more time and pick up the stamp. So you don't need to move the cardstock, you can actually rotate it with the stamp wheel. I thought it was helpful to share the rotation method as well. I don't know why I didn't think of it because that's pretty much what this stamping tool is meant to do. All right, now let's travel back in time to normal Simon and get back into the video. Now this next technique that I'm gonna show is really what makes the stamp wheel shine and sets it apart from other stamp tools on the market. For this next technique, I'm gonna use a red rubber stamp. So I'm going to gently peel out the photopolymer stamp and just set it off to the side while I'm not using it. And this allows you to fit the red rubber stamps inside your tool since they're a little bit thicker. So here I'm gonna either use the plaid maker stamp or I'm gonna use the pinstripe stamp. Either one will work nicely. And I'm gonna create my own design with the stamp wheel. So I'm going to peel out one of the stripes. I like that this is a peel apart background stamp. And to make sure we keep our cardstock in place, I'm just gonna go in using a little bit of tape runner adhesive on all four corners just to keep it held down inside of the tool. And I wish there was some sort of markings on the bottom here to make sure that your paper was centered inside of the stamp wheel but I'm gonna do my best that I can. Of course, you could draw on your own marks with a permanent marker if you want to, to make it easier. Then I'm gonna go in with the stripe stamp and I'm gonna sort of line it up in the center here at the bottom and in the center on the side. And then I'll go in with the acrylic block, I'm going to line it up in those markings and then place it down to lift off that red rubber stamp. For this stamp, I'm gonna use a little bit of guppy and I'm just going to ink up the rubber stamp. Then I'll rotate it again. And there we have our stripe all stamped. So now this is where we stamped, but what's so cool about this stamp wheel is I can rotate it and stamp it in several different positions on my card. So if I want this to kind of go all the way around, I could stamp it like that. But what I wanna do is rotate it enough so that it matches what we did on that side. So here's how I'm gonna stamp it. I'll rotate it so we can get some ink on this stamp and stamp it down, giving it some good pressure and that is just so cool. I used to do this kind of by hand by eyeballing it, but it's so cool you can get a more perfect impression by using the rotation method in the stamping tool. So I'm gonna rotate it a little bit more so that we can do the same thing on the opposite end. So that's how I want it to stamp. I'm going to flip it around, ink it up again, and stamp it down. 
but I think this is just so cool because you can see how easy it is to just turn and rotate this and how beautiful of a pattern you can get. So again, just rotate it until you have it how you like, and we'll rotate it again and stamp it down. And there we go. Now I'm gonna go in with a different stripe from that rubber stamp design. And then next, it's a little bit easier to line up. I can go right next to that orange stripe that we just stamped and line it into place. I'll make sure that this cross is in the center. It kind of helps me line things up. And then I'll pick it up. And then I'm gonna use Shooting Star, which is a little bit lighter. So we'll ink this up and then we'll rotate it. Stamp it down. And then again, we're going to rotate it around until we've reached where we want to stamp it next. We'll ink it up and then stamp it down into place. And it just does a perfect job at lining it up. So again, we'll keep rotating this around. All right, so we'll stamp that one down. I wanna line up another stripe, but this one kind of doesn't fit necessarily into here. I'm gonna try to squeeze it in and see if it's gonna fit. Rubber stamps can bend a little bit, so that's totally fine. And then I'll go in with this top acrylic block. Oh, okay, since it's not cooperating with me down there, I decided to flip it over and do it on this side. And I think this is gonna work because then if we rotate it like this, yep, that's gonna work perfectly. It'll stamp nicely in that area. So you can definitely line it up on this side as well if you're having trouble on the other one. Here I'm gonna use a little bit of Prom Queen, stamp it down. So there, that little bending tool, because clear stamps can bend as well, so there's my little life hack. If you need something to fit and it's a little bit too long for the border, just bend it a little bit. Okay, so the way that I bent this one makes it so that it doesn't line up there, but it does line up on this side. So I'll do the stamping of this one first. And there we go. And then we'll line it up here, bend it down here, and I think that should make it line up in this corner. Yep. I love that the stamping tool rotates in a circle so you can get really beautifully lined up backgrounds just like this one. Of course, with this last stripe, we had to do a little bit of a life hack, so it's not perfect, but if you use stamps that fit in here, this creates such a beautiful design in the end, and it's really nice and lined up. Now I'll clean out my ink off the inside of this plastic. Like I said, my Simon Hurley Create ink cleans off really well without staining pretty much anything. So I expect that it's gonna come off here really nicely, and it does. But of course, if you use an ink that stains, it might stain the plastic, I'm not quite sure. I do assume that a good stamp cleaner will take it off of here though. One thing I do wish the stamp wheel had is a magnetic base down here, because of course it is nice to use the sticky base, but when you're using rubber stamps, there's nothing to hold it down to, except for any adhesive you might tape on the back. So having both the sticky and magnetic base as an option would be even more helpful. That's not necessarily just a gripe with Altenew though. I've noticed that many other stamp platforms on the market have either a sticky base or a magnetic base and they don't have both. But I think having both would just make it a more versatile tool. If any manufacturers are hearing me, maybe include them both in one tool. I think that would be so versatile. All right, it's editing time in here and I just thought of something so I wanted to hop in and show you guys. So when it comes to the stamp wheel not being magnetic on the bottom or have anything to hold the paper down, I'm going to go in with a cutting mat. This is a cutting mat you would usually use for your Cricut. I'll link down below to the ones that I found on Amazon and I've had these for quite some time, really before the whole sticky mat thing became a big trend. All right, so I'm just going to fit this in my paper trimmer and trim the mat down. Okay, so the inside of the tool is seven and a half by seven and a half. So that's what I'm going to trim this mat down to. And a guillotine trimmer makes it really easy to cut this down and get a nice smooth cut. All right, so let's test it inside of here to see if it fits. And that looks like it's gonna be a really great fit. And since I wanted center markings, I'm gonna go in with my Misty ruler, which is a centering ruler, and I'm going to make marks for the center. And then I'm also going to make marks on either side as to where a card base would be. So I've made marks at four and one fourth, and now I'm gonna make marks at five and a half. All right, then I'll just loosely connect these marks, and this is going to make the corners for where my cardstock will sit. So I've made the markings on the back here, and then I can peel off the front and lay this right down inside of the stamp wheel. And this is a bit makeshift, but if I wanna just make sure that it stays down and stays in place, I can just add some mint tape to hold it down. I do this to hold my misty mat in place too, so it's not unusual, and it'll just make sure that it's held down in place. And then this is gonna help me align my cardstock really easily. All right, so now I can tell exactly where the center is. I'm gonna line these up in the corners. And then we're able to do our stamping. And since I still have that photopolymer base mat out, I'm going to go in with a red rubber stamp and I'm just going to peel out a couple pieces. This is from the Berries and Branches stamp and it creates some really beautiful wreaths if you pull these pieces out. 
So you can really follow along with the markings you have on here. There's also little lines to kind of know where to place things. So I find that to be pretty helpful when you're lining things up for a sort of wreath pattern. So I'm gonna lay it on top here. And then if I flip it inside out, it'll pretty much show me exactly where it's gonna be. And I think that's gonna look great. All right, so I'm gonna start off with fake plant and I'm just going to ink this up. And I wanna show how this sort of wreath works with regular images. Okay, so I'm going to place that in there, stamp it down. And there we have our first image. Now when you're building a wreath, you have a decision, which I like about this, to either move it once over or move it twice over, or you know, go however many times you want in here. I think I'm gonna move it twice and then I'm going to re-ink it and we'll stamp it down. And there we go. So again, I'll just move it twice. That's how it's gonna line up. Flip it and stamp. I love how easy the process is, giving it some good pressure. And then of course, this rotating method is just very easy to count how many you want to go over. And then continue the process of inking and stamping to build up the wreath. All right, then I'm gonna go in and sort of fill things in with these other branches. And we can go in, pick them both up, and I'm gonna do both at one time. And for this, I'm gonna go in with Viper, which is this really nice kind of muted olive green color and I can stamp them down. Then again, we can move however many turns we want. Here, I'm going to follow along with the same pattern and do two, but if you want an image to be more sparse throughout it, just skip more spaces then. It's really easy to use the tool and figure out how many images you want on here. All right, and then I'm just gonna keep shifting and stamping until I meet back at the same image. So I think this is the last one, and there we have a nice and complete wreath. All right, and then once I'm done stamping, I can just pull out this mat and then I can easily bend it, which helps remove the cardstock from the surface. It's a little bit stickier than most mats on the market, but it definitely works. And there is the finished wreath, which I just think is so awesome. I love that it's perfectly centered since we did that alignment and I loved filling in the images easily. So if you end up getting this tool, I highly recommend you guys do something like this at home. This made it so much more easy to use because if it's perfectly centered, then all of your images will work, but if you accidentally misalign it a little bit, your wreath is off center then. So this really helps. I hope Altenew or another company makes sticky mats like this in the future for the stamp wheel with all of the different measurements on it for a card, maybe for a square card too. It's really incredibly helpful. And then to keep this protected, I'm gonna put over the acetate sheet again, and then this will probably live at the bottom of my stamp wheel. And then what's really cool about this actually, let's see if this works how I think it's going to. Yes, it gives me those measurements in between. It gives me those measurements underneath, so if I'm using this photopolymer, I can still see those measurements. I like this a lot. So I really like these measurements. I think it's going to change the way that I use this tool. I wish they would have included it at the bottom of this tool in some dark markings so that you can see through um, all the tools, but if you do it yourself too, it'll totally work. All right, before this next technique, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of water and a paper towel or a lint-free cloth and just kind of wipe this down a little bit to get rid of any of the dust that might have already collected on the surface because I wanna see truly how sticky this mat can be. Okay, so I've wiped off some of the excess and then we'll let it kind of air dry from there and then I'll come back. So the question I'm trying to answer here is will the stencils stick and hold by themselves? I've seen some things where people say, yes, they do, but I've also seen other products in the past that people say they do, but you really have to hold it down with your hand. So I'm gonna give you the full honest truth if this works hands-free or how it works with the stencils. So I'm gonna go in with my stark white piece of cardstock and lay it down in the center. I've been loving sticky mats to hold down stencils and I've never tried out something with photopolymer like this. So I'm excited to test it out. I'm gonna go in using the Candles Layering Stencil Set from my most recent release. I've been loving this one because it's so easy and creates such great birthday cards pretty quickly. So I'm going to just place the rest of the stencil down into this and it seems like it's really gripping nicely there. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side. Whenever you're using a mat like this, you just wanna make sure the excess is kind of going onto the sticky part. All right, so I'm starting off with a little bit of Tropical Tango here. I'm using the blending foams. These are the domed blending foams, and I'm just going to go in and start my blending. Now I'm using no hands at the beginning here, and wow. Okay, this is pretty darn cool. I really like it for this. It definitely gets another couple points for this because there aren't many mats that I've tried like this that really hold down the stencils 
hands-free. Silicone is all right, but it doesn't really do the job perfectly. The sticky mats from scrapper.com do a great job. I do recommend those. This is like next level with how nicely this holds it down in place. Next, I'm gonna bring in a little bit of clear skies and I'll blend that up into the tropical tango. This is just so impressive. Like even if this wasn't a stamping tool along with this, being a stenciling mat by itself is so good. This is doing better than anything I've used before. Then I'll go in with some no diving, blend it into that clear skies, and I'll blend down a little bit more. And then lastly, I'll use a little bit of Crown Me ink at the bottom, and you can just see how beautifully these colors blend together. I love my inks for blending like this. Okay, then I'm gonna go in and remove my stencil. So my stencils have this like kind of coating on the back of it to make them not completely see-through. And that coating did come off on the photopolymers. I guess that really just shows you how clearly sticky this is. All right, so I'm going in with a little bit of water to try to remove that. And it looks like it's coming off pretty cleanly. So it didn't ruin the photopolymer at all. I'm just kind of scrubbing a little bit and the coating is coming off nicely. And then same thing, I'll wipe it off with a little bit of water to clean off the inks as well. If your ink stain, it might stain the stamp wheel mat. Now, one thing I do have to say is I probably wouldn't use things like lunar paste on here or any mixed media products. I would keep it to pretty gentle inking because you don't want to stain this with a bunch of different mediums. But we do have a really beautifully blended background. I love how simple it was to blend down and the stamp wheel really does give a hands-free experience as you're blending, which not many products do. All right, now let's talk about the stencils, which is the elephant in the room, these little areas that peeled off on the back. All right, so my Simon Hurley Create stencils have this sort of glossy side, which you'll definitely be able to tell in person, and then a more matte side. And the matte side is the one that has this coating down on the surface that could peel off, all right? If it peels off, it just makes your stencil clear. It doesn't look great, but it's not going to harm your stencil in any way, shape, or form. However, if you're using my stencils and you want to avoid this, just flip it over to the glossy side and place the glossy side down on the surface. Because if you use the glossy side, it's not going to rip anything and nothing's going to come off. And if it's a layering stencil like this, just make sure that both sides are facing the same way. So if you do the stencil upside down with the glossy side facing towards the stamp wheel, both of them will line up. You're just doing the stencil backwards like this. I did test it with other stencil brands. I tried Altenew, I did scrapboard.com, I also did Gina K and tested it on the surface and not all of them have that coating on them and most of them won't peel off like that. So just test your stencil, maybe test the corner of it on the mat before you go full out and do the whole thing. And if you need to, just flip it to the other side so that no coating peels off of the stencil. It's a pretty easy fix, but in this case, it's more the stencil's issue than the actual mat itself. Okay, so let's go over my thoughts. All in all, I think the stamp wheel is a really cool invention. I think there's lots of innovation happening in here with this stamping tool, and I think it's pretty cool. I love the photopolymer base of the stamping tool. I think that's a really new idea that nobody's had before. And as far as stenciling with this tool, super cool. It's one of the best stenciling tools I've used. I love pattern building with my stamps, and I think that rotating top acrylic block makes this a really unique tool and will get me lots of use out of it. All of that being said, I don't think this is going to be my day-to-day -day stamping tool. However, this I think I'm going to use for layering if I want to create a batch of cards in all four corners like that. The rotation is super cool if I want to create wreaths, and then also using it as sort of a stenciling tool might be really fun. One thing I want to quickly cover about this stamping tool is that the price point is a little bit higher. It's at $100, it's a little bit of an investment in this tool. But I have to say any of the other stamping tools that I invested in have lasted me years upon years. And with the large piece of photopolymer in here, as well as all of these plastic tool pieces, these are all seem to be very custom done. So I sort of understand the price point. You do have to understand that Altenew is not this huge corporation and it costs quite a bit of an investment, lots of money to go in and do those custom plastic pieces, do all of the molding and the tooling. There's a lot that goes into a sort of tool like this and I definitely respect them for the innovation and creating something that's really cool. That being said, I do understand that this price point is a little bit high and it's not for everybody, but please don't flood my comment section saying that it's way overpriced and that you don't wanna buy it. Just skip over it. I can tell there was tons of work and innovation put into this and I think those negative comments are harmful to the industry because it makes people not want to innovate like this. So just skip it if you're not interested. But constructive criticism is definitely welcome. Let me know what you think about this stamping tool down in the 
comments below. We'll have some conversations down there. I would love to hear your thoughts and questions about it. If I miss something in this video, let me know. If you have things you wanna see, let me know and I'll probably end up doing an updated version to cover even more things and create better projects than I did today. If you enjoyed the video, give it a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button down below so you never miss another card making and crafting video like this one from me. All right guys, I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you all soon. Bye.